White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre had this to say about NPR's reporting after Twitter labeled the outlet as state-affiliated media on its site. Let's listen. The hard-hitting, independence nature of their coverage speaks, uh, speaks for itself. And so... Well, journalist Glenn Greenwald responded to the White House press secretary, tweeting, the best way for a news outlet like NPR to show that they're not beholden to the U.S. government and are unbiased is to have the White House press secretary rise to her feet in defense of NPR and he preys on their great reporting. <laughs> he added, truly independent outlets anger the state. They often end up where Biden DOJ has put Assange, not showered with praise by White House press secretary. When is the last time NPR did reporting that angered the Biden White House, FBI, CIA, NSA, et cetera? Greenwald also tweeted, amazing NPR in trying to argue it's not state affiliated, didn't only cite the praise of the White House press secretary for its journalism, it also cited this BS self-proclaimed disinformation expert who works in a program funded by the Pentagon. It's always red flags for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is a, obviously, look, okay. Yes, NPR is not, um, is not compelled by the government to have a certain editorial voice. It is true that its editorial voice does happen to, I think, like obviously align with the values of like kind of progressive Democrats who staff the Biden administration and would staff whatever administration is in charge if it's a Democrat. Um, they're not, Yes, they're not state affiliated the same way an actual government directed yeah. propaganda channel would be. They're they're actually not even state affiliated to the same degree that like the BBC is. Right. So I I appreciate the criticism I saw that if you're really going to go down this route of any government funding, the BBC would be more fitting of this designation than NPR. But um, but like it is it is it is state funded. It it gets its like it gets its budget from Congress. I you can't say it doesn't. Um, some people have tried to draw this distinction. Well, it's not government funded, it's public funded. Well, the public funds are, are, are picked by the government. <laughs> Michael Tracy actually said this. Can we, can we throw up this tweet? He was you know, responding to, uh, my independent journalist Michael Tracy was re responding to, you know, someone saying, like, it's disinformation to say it's, it's government funded. It's publicly funded. It's the same thing. Yeah, no, I, I'm in agreement there. I, I think it is, it is, publicly funded, which yeah. is essentially state funded. Um, it's definitely not, I think the, the characterization a little bit, I think Glenn Greenwald goes a little far there. Mm -hmm. I mean, for him to make it seem like it's, you know, like it's Fox or MSNBC mm -hmm. or one of these, uh, you know, kind of slanted towards the White House, whomever the White House is, uh, I, I think that that's not what NPR is. And I think a lot of the people there consider themselves to be nonpartisan journalists, but uh, it is, in fact, state funded. I mean, that's that's a reality that we can't get away from. And it is, uh, you know, like you said, less than the BBC, less than CBC, less than TRT, less than, you know, of course, you know, Russian state media. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, I don't think you can you can necessarily put it in that same category. But you can't deny that it is publicly funded, which means that it's state funded. Yeah, which is the thing I don't like. I actually like how we describe it on Twitter is not a very important issue. I would certainly, it gets 1% of its funding from the government. We can just, it can, it can, um, uh, it could get rid of this concern by just not taking government funding anymore, which is what I think it should do. But Brianna and I were talking about this yesterday and she's like, oh, you wanna, you wanna drag Big Bird out behind the, <laughs> behind the, uh, the alley and you know, shoot him on Sesame Street. And I was kind of like, yeah. You admit of, Romney, sorta. man. Let me tell you, Robbie. <laughs> You and Mitt Romney have some sort of problem with Big Bird and Oscar yeah, the Grouch. Like, what's yeah. going on with no, that? No, we just, uh, I don't like, uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't like government funding of anything, but especially government funding of the media. Um, it is interesting that uh, this, you know, so this criticism of it as state affiliated is right because the, the perspective aligns currently with the state. I appreciate that, like, if there was a Republican administration and you'd have conservative news sites that would align with what, you know, uh, President Trump would say, mm -hmm. I don't think conservatives would say, well, this outlet is state affiliated because it happens to, like, <laughs> share the view of the Trump administration. So well, I, I would say it's a little unfair to go that route. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's just judging 
a media outlet by whether it has angered the White House is mm -hmm. not a good, I don't think that's a real gauge, even of independence. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, media outlets are supposed to report the facts. And if they find, uh, particularly nonpartisan media outlets are supposed to report the facts. If they find some facts on uh, an issue that's important to the American people and it's damaging to the Biden administration, then, you know, I, I think that that's what they should report on. But the idea that, hey, they haven't angered the FBI or they haven't angered the NSA mm -hmm. as a gauge of independence, I think that's a, that's a poor gauge. Hmm. Well, meanwhile, according to a new report from Semaphore, Twitter is no longer policing Russian and Chinese state-backed media, violating the platform's own policies. In 2020, Twitter began labeling official government and state-controlled media accounts uh, accounts and blocked the state-controlled ones from appearing in search results. Also, last year, Twitter announced it would be flagging tweets that contained links to government-controlled sites and would tell users to stay informed. But in tests conducted by Semaphore, the state-informed labels no longer show up. Um, I, I'm not sure I would object to that. The, the hand-holding that the platforms try to do with users is, I think, often ill-advised. Twitter's one feature that I do like is this, the community notes thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of a you know, self-policing fact-checking because you can have a community note that's policing a tweet or fact-checking it, and then you can respond to the note as well. It's kind of like the way Wikipedia works or something. Right, right. Which tends to, it's certainly not perfect, but produces higher quality information than a lot of other you know, very, uh, I would say, ham-fisted attempts to police information on social media. On Facebook, it's just done by ideological activists. Um, you know, the platform trying to do it. You remember the ridiculousness of them, like, the, the selectivity of putting, like, COVID fact checks and election fact checks on everything, because then the yeah. information changes. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I don't have a problem with fact checks if they're actually factual. I, th I think sometimes mm -hmm. we didn't have the facts. And, you know, I think saying something needs context. There have been times where I've seen a video and it's gotten me all riled up and come to find out that there was context missing from that video. And I would have liked to have been informed, you know, by the outlet to say, mm. hey, there's more you need to know before you, you know, you look at this video and, and maybe come to this conclusion. Or maybe you hear this statement. Or maybe this, this is a statement from 2015 and it's not from yesterday. So I think that, you know, those kinds of things are, are important for social media outlets to put in. But, you know, to say this is misinformation or, or mm -hmm. you know, to really uh, police, uh, you know, speech in, in some of these outlets, even if they are state-controlled media, I think is, is a dangerous path to go down. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch survive for now, but we'll have <laughs> more rising right after this. <laughs>